Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. And guess who Art and I are with? Yes, yes, it's Manny Pacheco, Mr. Forgotten Hollywood. Manny, great to see you. <laughs> Good to see you guys. <laughs> hey, Manny, hey, Manny, you know. Um, I just I come back just for the intros. I just want you to know that. I, as long as you guys yeah. keep introing me, I, I'll, we I'll actually come. spend what time on the intros and on researching the subject matter. <laughs> and I think in the last 150 episodes, that's become apparent. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of things forgotten, and that most people don't know, but I know that you know because all things worth remembering about forgotten Hollywood is inside that cranium. I know that. We know that. So here, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to tell us a little bit about Angus McPhail. Oh my gosh! Now there is a forgotten Hollywood term, a uh, person. Uh, Angus McPhail obviously was a screenwriter mm -hmm. that worked with um, that worked with Alfred Hitchcock, and he is basically the individual who introduced, didn't create the term, but introduced the idea of the MacGuffin into plot devices uh, in Alfred Hitchcock movies. What is a MacGuffin? A MacGuffin is an object or an idea that advances the plot of a movie. It may or may not have any importance at all, but it is used as kind of a, what was the term you talked about, John, prior to us getting together? A red herring, is that what yes, you said? Yes, a red herring, yeah. That's what it is. It's, if you want to use a 1950s term, it's a red herring. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a red herring, of course, is a, as I understand it, it's a misleading clue, yeah, a, a diversion right. in the story. And it's deliberately there to make you th start thinking in this direction when the plot is really going to go in that direction. I but, think but that MacGuffin's not quite the same thing, is it? Well, Art, I think, kind of nailed it. It's a diversion as opposed to misleading. It's not it's not intentionally misleading. It's just a diversion to keep the film going so that we can get another 30 minutes out of the film, another 40 minutes out of the film. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. <laughs> so Alfred, is, is it a MacGuffin any different? Well, Alfred Hitchcock was really the, uh, the, the, the king of MacGuffins. I mean, if, all you have to do is look no farther than North by Northwest. And, you know, he's chasing a spy that doesn't exist. And yeah. quite frankly, the spy that doesn't exist is kind of important in the sense that it keeps Cary Grant moving and away from the law and away from the bad guys. But but at the end of the day, the 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 absent spy uh, doesn't really have much to do at the end because, yeah. it's, it, you know, that MacGuffin is actually just a diversion for the real spy played by Eva Marie Saint. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and of course, another kind of more innocuous MacGuffin is all you have to do is look at Lifeboat with all of the worldly products that uh, that Tallulah Bankhead has in the boat as they're, as they're trying to be rescued. And um, and she keeps losing them. They all keep ending up in the water. Her typewriter, yeah. her jewels, her fur, everything goes. And so these Mag the MacGuffin for her, for this for this plot device is what's going to happen next. What else is she going to lose? Everybody else looks like hell, but she yeah. looks gorgeous and beautiful until the end of the film when she loses everything to the ocean. So mm. that's kind of an interesting MacGuffin uh, in Lifeboat. But I mean, you know, to be fair, the, Alfred Hitchcock didn't necessarily create the MacGuffin. I mean, it's been used as a plot device for years and years and years prior, or at least during his career, by other directors. I mean, the... Uh, the 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 slippers the emerald slippers in 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 the wizard of oz that's sure. a you sure. know the idea is that the witch wants the slippers the ruby slippers ruby. right and and you know all she wants to do is go home but the ruby yeah. slippers are what's keeping her from going home and ultimately the ruby slippers are what gets her home yeah <laughs> yeah so to me that's a macguffin and of course the maltese falcon the falcon itself is a macguffin right it's, it's, it, it, it turns out at the end, it's, I mean, spoil alert, if you haven't seen this, I, I'm sorry I'm about to say this, but I mean, the, 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 the falcon is worthless. It's lead. It's yeah. stuff the dreams are made of, as we did, we, we mentioned in a previous interview. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the MacGuffin device has been used a lot.
I mean, I'm sure you guys can think of MacGuffins in other films. Yeah. Well, have- screenwriters, it's a, it's a screenwriting tool. Yes. It really is what separates the men from the boys, uh, so to speak. It's yeah. the idea that a professional writer knows how to mm-hmm. create devices to, yeah. keep the, to keep the film interesting. As sure. opposed to when a lot of us walk into a film and you know in the first 13 minutes they're going to see the mother-in-law and she's going to have it in a purse, but she didn't really put it there. It's a dog that took it and put it in there. I mean, when you already know the plot, in the first 13 minutes, there's probably no MacGuffin involved. Because yeah, to me, it's I'll, give you, I'll, give, I'll give you like an like a real offbeat MacGuffin. To me, the um, was it a I don't I don't remember what kind of car it was, but that wonderful vehicle that was used in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and it ultimately, oh yeah, it was a it was a Porsche, I think. It could have been a Porsche. Yeah, yeah, you're or maybe right. Maybe it was a Corvette. It's yeah, but it was a really Corvette, nifty. Yeah. It, was a, it was definitely a nifty convertible that was uh, that, that was owned by the father of his friend that ultimately gets absolutely destroyed and really has no importance in the film except you find out later that it's going to help. Um, it's going to help his friend re- reach adulthood with much more confidence and 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 masculine right. authority. Right. So I mean that that's I think that that auto is a great MacGuffin throughout the film because it's okay. so because who who admires it more than Ferris Bueller he loves sure. that car and and that car is then you know used mis, mischievously uh, by the uh, by the auto garage attendants I mean yeah. the car just seems to have a life of its own until yeah. it die until it dies yeah <laughs> well, so until it, it the, came up to its demise it was really yeah. a very uh, a, I think very that's sad a, Guffin. I, I, I mean, and again, I mean, that, that's that's something that a screenwriter has to to build into the story. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. How now, even though people don't use the term MacGuffin much anymore, uh, it, I, I often hear it related to uh, Hitchcock. But it seems to me that there's probably MacGuffins in a lot of modern movies as well. It's a it's a tool. It's a screenwriter's gimmick. Oh, I, I definitely agree. I think that it's never going to be stopped to be used. I, you're absolutely right. I mean, the MacGuffin for Oppenheimer, for example, would be the the nuclear blast, the, the bomb that's that needs to be built. Right. And, and really, the, the the bomb goes off. I mean, two thirds into the film, we still got a whole one third that talks about his life post explosion. You know, yeah. post, post yeah. the uh, New Mexico tests. Yeah. And uh, uh, and to me, the bomb is the MacGuffin. I mean, it really defines Oppenheimer. Um, is it is it the narrative for the entire film? No, it's a three and a half hour film that talks about the bomb, uh, you know, kind of offhandedly throughout right. the film. But it's not the focus of the film, except for maybe 10 minutes of the film. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you're right. MacGuffins are used all the time. The MacGuffin for Killers of the Flower Moon, for example, might be the uh, the fact that there is um, there are mineral mineral and water rights right. that that needs to be obtained by the villains in the piece, Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, and uh, and uh, Robert De Niro, and that the Indians have them, and so that yes. now the device is going to be used to systematically eliminate the Osage Nation. So yeah. yeah. I mean, yes, MacGuffins are absolutely the 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 end all be all in films. And I will push back on one thing you said, John. MacGuffins are very, very popular among uh, the TCM crowd. Th- that's one of the most favorite things to talk about when you go to the festivals. <laughs> hey, you remember the MacGuffin in this and the MacGuffin in yeah. that? The MacGuffins and yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's understandable. That's so, understandable. yeah, MacGuffins are still very, very popular. I mean, anybody who loves Hitchcock is going to love a good MacGuffin. You bet. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's so, great. Fanny, thank you so much. This is always a lot of fun talking to you. Yes, right. and, and just before we leave, let's just remind the audience that Art Kirsch is our MacGuffin. <laughs> the, secret, the secret sauce. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.